Hi everyone, I'm Amoy Smith. And I'm Ramon Christie. And welcome to our body of work where we have collaborated with each other. We infused our artistic approach. I, a ceramic artist, and Amoy, a textiles and fiber artist. We took a sort of unconventional route in the way that we executed and uh, produced our artwork. Although we were investigating different topics in regards to what we were expressing through our art, our artistic approaches came together and created this beautiful body of work that you see right here. The collaborative aspect was something that um, was a bit exciting because from time when I was in college, I had about two years of textiles, but I never went into it in depth. And so, so getting the opportunity now to work alongside a textiles artist to create something new was rather um, a good experience. Um, something that helped me to free up and loosen up a bit because I'm a very structured and rigid person, as many people know. And so come out of my element to um, get involved with something so soft and uh, is malleable a word you can use? Yeah, but something different from the clay. It was, um, it was a good experience. Okay. Um, so we spoke about the collaboration already, like how we thought like went into it. Um, but now we can start looking at like the use of materials. So as Ramon said, he's a ceramic artist and I'm a textile and fiber artist. And in looking at Ramon's pieces, because normally I would do woven pieces, um, wall pieces and applique, I was like, okay, how do I apply my textiles to ceramics? So this piece behind me here, it was actually a broken piece. And um, I was looking at how do I integrate into this, like integrate my skills into this. So when I was looking at it, so it was supposed to be like a bigger version of shells, right? So, so I, so at first, before we started, I was on the theme of shells, and then Raman came along and was also working with the theme of shells. So I was looking at like shells as barriers, as protectors, as hosts for different organisms, etc., for nuts, etc. So he made this huge conch shell, and I wanted to look at making the conch shell stand on its own by highlighting different areas. So what I decided to do was to highlight the cracks. So since you know like a conch shell is a at home. So I wanted it to be like something that was shredding through it and peeking through the holes. So I decided to use this thread. So this thread wasn't the first thread like that I opted to use. It was a series of trial and errors because I was working with nudes and I was like nude shades. And I don't think the dark brown and the orange was working. So I decided to use more of like a peach coral that's on it right here. And um, uh, beige. And mixed it with different skills. So like the whole thing of just knotting and intertwining and the finger weaves and the crochet patterns in the top. Um, and for the other pieces now, I was looking at highlighting them so much, but not so much as this one. So this one it was, is where you see majority of the work. With the other one, it was basically like highlighting it of the others because I found that those glazed pieces already had a lot going on. So I basically wanted to kind of calm them down. Um, so I still cho um, chose to use the new shades, but at a lesser effect, if, if, I'm, if I may say that, like a lesser effect, not so much in-depth detailing as I did with this big conch shell. So what we did with the collaboration was that I would work on a piece and would, inter would interchange. So like, I work on a piece, Ramon gets it, Ramon does something, Ramon works on a piece, he gives it to me, I work on it and I gave it back. So that's what happened with these pieces. So Ramon, how was that for you, like working with the materials? Um, 
the again working on this project, this body of work right here, it caused me to open my mind and to think differently as to how one would envision fiber interacting with the artwork. Because starting this project, I did not see how fiber or textiles could work with anything that I had. But through research and through seeing how other artists have involved both elements are the elements with another thing. For example, another artist that I look at, she infused fiber art and wood. Mm -hmm. So looking at how they did those work, I had to sit down and do some extensive thinking as to how I could do the, the works. Luckily, through the entire process, we then tap into our, our strengths until late. So in the initial phase, we were working on trying to create an installation type piece or a wall piece and realized that it wasn't happening. So when we decided to stick to our strengths in the end, we were able to create these beautiful pieces of work. Um, your approach to using the fibers in itself, it changes the whole discussion around body of work as how these works were before when they were fired I did not think that they would be of any use because they didn't come out as how I wanted them the results were not how I wanted them and uh, again the artistic process is not something that is just static it's something that is ever changing so when you were able to look at it and envision something else I just give you the go ahead to just do what you do best, which is to use your fiber. So that, that, that was good. And I really enjoyed what was done to the piece in the back, especially how the fiber comes through the, the holes in the pot. I think that is, that is the strongest piece for me because I actually love that. And you were able to translate my vision that was on a piece of paper into reality so that is it and in terms of the the process of the finger knitting right, why did you choose the, the the approaches that you incorporated within the body of, in terms of the finger knitting and the okay so for in choosing the things, it wasn't like I got up and decided to choose something. It was a process. So like I was doing it, I was like, okay, this worked, this didn't work. So it was like an investigation into doing it. And so like for the cracked areas, I knew I wanted threads coming through. So what I did was kind of use the, um, the crochet hook to loop them through and to knot them into space, um, into place. And I used a little bit of glue to tack it in as well. But for the finger knitting arrows, um, initially I wanted to weave right here at the top. And I realized the weaving wouldn't give it that aspect that I wanted. And I thought the finger knitting was one much thicker. And the two, it had a pattern that was somewhat similar to the woven pattern that I was going for. But at a bigger difference. So... I did that, and instead of weaving like one thread, I decided to use like multiple layers of thread to add that feel to it. So instead of it looking flat, like there is some dimensions to it, basically. So that was done like to fill that area, and the crochet piece at the top was done to add some texture to the piece, but not so much to take away from the piece. So when I crocheted those, I was looking at how do I create some little peepholes that you can actually see through the, the holes to see that the ceramic underneath and not necessarily just textile for that block. Um, for the other pieces, I also use finger knitting as well as um, just hooking the threads through. Um, th those pieces were mostly like for the two conch shell, not the two conch shells, the two clam shells at the back. It was mostly um, for it's an area for your light to sit on. So like when you open a clamshell and you see the pearl inside, um, it's to just basically be like a base of the pearl. 
and the for the hand it was to basically kind of ground the hand and to mesh back the hand with the vessel that's over the hand as to kind of merge the two of them so that's what i was thinking when i was working on those pieces okay. and for full disclaimer the portion that was done for the base of the hand we had a lot of backing and forthing with that but i was enlightened that that shouldn't be so rigid so that's how it was incorporated so okay so you've talked about my i uh, talked about my engagement with your work so how was your engagement with my work um the the process of that is that we didn't want to do anything that was too overbearing for each other as we discussed so I did a subtle expression with the, with the work. So I incorporated a small amount of shells, ceramic shells that were made. Um, so, we, so we could mix synthetic shells and ceramic shells to the, to the work. Um, what we did in the initial stage was feed off each other because your work was centered around shells. So I decided that I should stay on the path and not stray too much from that. So I took that and used that for the motif to making the other, the other work. So um, in sewing on the shells to the pieces um, was, was good because I haven't done any sewing of anything in a while. Drawing the knowledge that my mother taught me to so sew on and stuff. So it was, was fun. Again, I didn't want the pieces to be overbearing with other stuff because we had other shells that were to be incorporated, but um, I didn't want to throw off the aesthetic of the work in order to make it look too crowded. So uh, it was placed in front of me because, in all honesty, again, when the thing was in front of me, I was wondering, what was I going to do with this work right here? Like, Place them around in multiple, multiple patterns. And it's like, it's not working for me at all. So, so I put them down. So I had to walk away and come back. Walk away and come back. Until I found something that worked with me. I arranged me that worked with me. And I involved some of my little ceramic turtles as well. So I played around and it, it was fun. Um... A lot of you might be wondering why shells. So um, I think the first, this was actually my first time working with cheese shells. The first type of shell I've worked with were pistachio shells. So as I said, I was looking at shells with the barrios and the first thing that I did was to look at the definition of a shell um, in the dictionary. And I remember it saying a protective outer layer or barrio for an organism. And then in looking at that, because I normally work with nature, I was wondering, okay, how do humans link back to shells? Because, you know, nature link with humans. And I was looking at, okay, I was saying, okay, so I remember the first thing I did when that idea came to me was I started asking some of my friends, what does the term shell mean to you? Or when you hear of the term, when you hear of the word shell, what comes to your mind? I remember people saying, oh, shell the bar in a shell, stuff like that. And I looked at, okay, how do I do that? Like put it into a body of work. And it came to me the whole idea of, you know, somebody saying it in your shell, like if you're putting on a whole facade, so everybody thinking this is you or this is not you or everything is well, so stuff like that. Um, so initially, initially I wanted to do some insulation pieces that could be more interactive, like wall cotton, et cetera. But that wasn't working out, and um, so my ideas did change a lot throughout. Um, but I think I really do appreciate and trust the process and what I created because, for instance, the diptych was actually a triptych, and even with that, I knew I wanted to highlight shells. So the three shells I decided to focus on were the seashells, the pistachio shells, and the curry shells. So I looked at shells as, bar as um, homes, shells as hosts for nuts, and then shells for currencies. And 
I was looking at how do I incorporate that. And uh, a lot of you might be wondering why the nudes. So, you know, like when you're on the seashore, you see the show, um, the shows by the seashore, you're walking and you see the water foam gushing on the seashore. And I was like, okay. So I got the nude shades of birds and I wove them. And I decided I didn't want to use just the, just the woven pieces as is. So what I did was actually to go into it and cut them up in different squares of, and rectangles and I kind of pieced them together um, to create bigger pieces to get the play on the eyes basically. So that was what I was doing for the diptych. For, the, um, for these small pieces around here, I was looking at basically like seashell memoirs, like shell memoirs, like you go to the, when you used to go to the beach, to the parents, stuff like that, because I've been collecting seashells from I was young. Um, people gave them to me, my aunt gave me shells, and I've just been um, collecting them. And I was like, how do I incorporate them? So this basically was not, like, I think out of everything, that was the only thing I didn't sit down and plan to say, okay, this is what I'm going to do. But for the others, I actually sat down and thought about it. So what happened was like in December, there are both, I had this little squares and I'm like, okay, what do I do with these? And I just took it up and I started playing around with the lace and with the shells. And then I be began um, layering them. And I was like, okay, how do I mount these? And then the idea of just using small dowels and wrapping them together basically. Um, so it's to create kind of like a frame, but not necessarily a frame frame. So it kind of dazzles you and kind of pulls you in when you look at it. So it's like looking at multiple one time, but multiple as a whole and then multiple as individuals. So how was your conceptual development, Ramon? Um, well, while working last year, the, the ideas that were there, the totally transformed coming into the, the new year. Um, as was mentioned, it's a process for us. So while we were there, we were working for about from September, October there about. But as the time went on, so we were working, we put our words beside each other, things changed. Um, but while working, because of the mind continuously at work, at work, at work, just instructed to just do the work and not even focus on putting things together. So was working and things came to my mind, mainly inspirational and all that. But towards the ending of the year when a lot of things were happening in the country and especially in the financial sector, and all of that. That's when it hit me that I need to create a body of work that address these issues. And I'm a person that loves to tell stories and I love when my work tells stories. So the ideas were um, transformed during that period. Um, for example, this piece right here, the, the beauty of failure. And the reason why I call this piece of beauty a failure is that, as was mentioned before, when the pieces were fired in the kiln, they did not come out how I wanted at all. And I have this very bad thing about me that anything that don't come out right, I just throw it under a tree that I have in front of my house. So I kept questioning myself, why do I always put away stuff, especially when I work, very hard on it. And I look at it as well in relation to how society is. We try out things, and if we don't get through, we either give up or we go at it again. Most times, a lot of persons give up. But if you actually take the time and just stop, rewind, and go again, you realize that what you are capable of doing with what you might have perceived as a failure or a failed thing, it can be transformed into a magnificent work of art. Just like this here, Amoy saw the potential in what was in the shell. As after the firing, I looked at it and it was just not happening at all. And the hybridization process 
was mainly about how each other would incorporate their techniques. And when I saw this and she was so excited as to what she was going to do, I said, go at it. And this is the result. So this goes to show that no matter how, as I said, no matter how a situation is or how it appears to be very bad, if you look at it from another perspective, if you take another go at it, you will be amazed as to what you can create out of it or the, the beautiful situation that may arise out of the failure. Um, my second piece around here with the hand, that one is a very touchy one to me now because through the end of the last part of the year, last 2022, coming into 2023, there were a lot of issues within the financial sector where a lot of persons were misappropriating funds, giving funds to family members, using people's funds to take care of their health situation and all of that. And it was something that was bothering me because as a young man coming up, you hear a lot of adults telling you that, um, yes, you need to invest. Invest in yourself, invest in your tools, but mostly invest for the years to come. So I took up myself and I opened a, 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 a stock account and I, I went and I bought stocks and I said, yes, I, I am a man now. I have prepared myself for the future. Everything is right with me. And then a couple, couple years later, I look and say, oh, big company in financial scandal, person, thief out all of the money. And, all. and I was like, hmm? Yeah. Yeah, and I was like, like, seriously? Like, although they said the money isn't short, and I know that I'm not the only person that has been affected throughout all of this, I look at it to say all the other financial institutions that have been robbed by people with their ambitions. Hardworking individuals go and save their money and put it in and these other persons come now and decide that they must take it for themselves. And it was bothering me. And I was looking at it and I decided to make that work right there because in a society that is slowly crumbling, especially in the financial aspect, what is going to happen to the other persons who are coming up now? Um, they want to elevate whether in job position or economic stature in society. But what is left for them? How will they get that wealth that they want so bad? How will they get it if everything that is there is being siphoned away from the persons who are actually there in these establishments? No. So that is where the concept for that work came from. Um, it's a sort of a metaphorical representation, not something literal. So that is how I decided to illustrate that work right there with the hand, the vessel pouring into the hand. What is happening is that the, the fiber that Amoy incorporated within the body of work represents the what left that is coming out of the vessel. So the hand is reaching for the what left and you can see that there are some threads on it. To, to represent that and the shells going upward represent the wealth that is being siphoned away from from these entities now the reason i make these works are for us to have a discussion because we we talk about these things but we don't really like talk about them per se we we, we say oh yes this happened but what are we going to do about it what are the younger persons going to do when they are in these positions now will they continue the trend of being choppers, will they make a change within these entities or will they just look and just let it pass them to say, it's not my money, it's not my business, anything happen, happens. So we need to have these conversations because if we don't, then how the, the financial sector, not just the financial sector, how everything is now, there won't be any change. There will just be a regression. And we don't want a regression within society because we have worked so hard. We are what, 60, we'll be 61 years this year. We can't be in a position where we are celebrating 61 years and the only thing we have for our name is that Jamaica is just a land of teeth. 
we can't have that at all. So we need to actually change that dynamic, change that discussion about us. And the next piece that I have now, with the ones that are, they were made, again, inspiring by what Amai said about shells and shells for protection and things. So, if you look and you see those shells, they are, they are varied. They are, they are variation. So, one of them is open, beautifully colored with the glaze, and the other one is closed, and it's of a neutral color. Now, that piece represents how society is in terms of how I interpret being granted opportunity. Um, you have a person who has the skills, who has the knowledge, who has everything that is needed to do a particular job. But they are overlooked and the task is given to somebody else because they may have certain connections, they may look a certain way, they may be of a certain family, and the list goes on. Now, why is it that we overlook these people and give, it, give the opportunities to other persons. Like, we need to sit down and ask that, that question. And I think it goes back, well, I don't really want to say go back to a slavish mentality, but it goes back to the, the, the perception that, you know, people of, of different color, different skin tone and all that, they, they are better persons to sell a company's image are to draw in more clients, are to all of that. So they won't give a man like that looks like me or speaks like me a certain task to go out and represent their company and all that. So that is why I made that work that no matter what a person looks like, no matter what a person speaks like, where they come from and all of that, they should be given the same opportunity as anyone else who has the same skill set. So those were the ideas that were going around in my mind in the construction of my body of work. My mind is very active, so I'm always thinking, 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 thinking. So sometimes I just have to pick one and two and just say, yeah. It was challenging. You want to talk it through? <laughs> like, that was tedious at points. Um... And challenging at points and then you know you have one idea i have one idea and then you have to meet each other at midpoint um so it was definitely a learning experience for me and a very new experience as well that one that i approached with um open arms i didn't really go into it to say okay am i gonna do this am i gonna do that easy. but um so initially when we were given um, the task or when we were approached. So the aim was that I create something, he creates something, I take what he creates, he takes what I create, and we interchange, and then I get it back. I add to it, he adds to it. Um, so for my piece around the, back there, the diptych, that was actually started off as a triptych. You know, as I was saying, you know, not necessarily how you start to end, so it's a diptych now. Um, so I did those pieces, I wove the pieces, wove them on different lengths and I cut them up, sew them back together. And I was like, okay. I started putting on the shells and I started doing the embroidery. And as I said before, I've always worked with neutral colors. And then Ramon was working with um, some blues and the greens, some more like seascape colors. So I was like, okay, how do I incorporate it so not let them look too different? So I actually went in with those embroidery threads to give those highlights on those areas. So I did my piece, I did crushes, I did layering, and then he got it. He added the seashells, the ceramic seashells that he made, and he added the turtles as well. He gave them back to me, I started layering them, etc. Um, he made his ceramic pieces, I got them, I interacted with them, he got them back. Um, so stuff like that. So, yeah, so how was that for you, Raman? I honestly... You see, if we had more time, I would have loved the experience more. Basically, because the time was short, like, and because how I am, 
like I like to see things go a certain way. And if it don't happen that way, trust me, I get really miserable. And people know me miserable already. It is something that I would actually consider because as I say, I'll say, I work with other artists in making other artworks already. So this is actually new. It has its exciting bits here and there. Um, but it's something I would consider. Well, from that piece around the back, that shows that there is endless possibility with, with fiber. So I, I am more open now to fiber being incorporated with my work, but just not in the short space of time because. So how did you find like attaching on the, the shelves to the work? Luckily, I did textiles, so I did learn how to sew. And my mother teach me how to sew already, so, yeah. Okay. So, yeah, so, so we clashed. So, not all of these <laughs> went all the way supposed to do. So as I said before, there was a turtle, and I never got that turtle. Um, this hand, for instance, as well, because when I saw the hand, I immediately wanted to cover, like, the base and put some strings coming on and things coming down to it, right? So um, I did finger knitting to cover that and stuff, but you know, as I said, we clashed at points because that was like one of our major clashing areas with the hand there. And even with that white shell up at the top, I wanted to do like an, a knitted like thing for the outside and that wasn't working out. So it was mo mostly like trial and error and investigations to see what works, what doesn't work, how can I tweet this, how can I not tweet this. Um, because as I said, I didn't want to use the glue the stuff. And I wanted it for the so the aim for the collaboration wasn't isn't supposed to be like, okay, at the end of the collaboration, he takes ceramic so take his he takes his ceramic piece, I take my textile piece. It was supposed to be like one thing, like a fusion of the two things. So it was good it was challenging it was fun it was fun um yeah um apart from the the fiber aspect and that part behind me another thing that i really appreciate how am i actually took the work was the what do you call it the crochet the crochet yeah all right so when i saw the crochet first with something that she had made it was on a small scale and immediately, I was thinking of it being bigger. And so we kept asking, can you make it bigger? Can you make it bigger? And Amaya was not having it. So Because Christian needed yeah, <laughs> skin. So she was not having it at all. So I'm yeah. actually surprised that she actually um, did that as a finish. But in, in entirety, I, I, I would have loved to see the, 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 the crochet more. But I'm, I am... Maybe that is another project going forward that I can make something and she does a big crochet thing to incorporate. Okay. And then even so, like even with this, like we did the finger knit. So it was so we wanted to go against what you typically see for a textile thing. Like if you see a finger knit, it's the perfect thing. So we did a lot of, a lot of distortion um to sew it on, to use the hooks. So it was really really fun to play with these little raised areas to get them attached on and stuff like that to get the threads down so it was really fun and interactive yeah, any questions question, or oh you okay um look look alone <laughs> um well the remaining wealth is actually the the dregs that that that, that reset dregs. the fiber, the fiber coming down, that is actually the remaining wealth of what is actually there. Because as you can see, the the shells that are going upwards, that represents the wealth that is being taken away. So what is actually left is the the fiber that is coming down off the pot, and the hand is actually reaching out to see what it can get. <laughs> okay. mm -hmm. Well, I think 
even though the concepts are two, two completely different concepts, I think they do fit in with the term, with the whole shell, shell category, because as I said, I was looking at like shells and people putting on a facade. So in his context, the people putting on a facade would be like, okay, you think all is well with the company, but if one person ever discovered that there was something wrong, everybody else wouldn't know. Um, it was... Like, I never know some of the concept. <laughs> and that, that's the thing. So I never know some of the concept. Like, well, I don't think there was a concept really associated with this big Kong shell. Um, I knew the concept that he was going for the hand and the shreddings coming out. But I didn't even know the context of the, the clamshell either until recently because when I saw the clamshell, I was like, okay, and I thought it was just a play on the shells. I never really got where that was coming from. I think that was the one I didn't know what was the whole thing. But like hearing, hearing him um, describe this and everything, I can see how it factors out. I can see how they align. I can see the whole difference with the colorism that he's talking about with the clamshells, with the darker one and the lighter one. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, personally, I connect to it in the sense that I'm really put this now so i'm a sentimental person so if you give me something i'll save it i remember that you gave it to me um with the whole aspects of the seashells now as i said it's something i've been collecting so you know you build up those memories you have those feelings and even so like it's just not the same like going to a beach now it's way different from when i was a child like there is hardly no seashore in some of them some of them, um, it's a lot of seaweed and debris and all of those stuff. Um, but I connect to it in the sense where it's not a matter really have to. It's a matter like exploring, like seeing where it could go for those. But yeah, so I really connected more. With, I'm really connected more with the pistachio shells though. So the aunt who gave me the seashells, so she started my whole seashell like urged me to start the whole seashell collection because I normally just collect them. And then there's another aunt who gave me the pistachio shells and she died. Like she died suddenly. And you know, I always ask family members to collect the shells and she collected them. So the pistachio shells minus like two of them that are on the diptych are what she gave me before she died. Um, so it's a matter of like remembering that I got those from her, what those she shells represent to me, to see that, you know, she could actually sit down and remember that to collect them for me and that I actually got them to get them from her. So it's the whole thing of the connection, the whole thing that remem um, remembering that, you know, I got this from her and the whole thing that everything is interconnected in the end and that everything serves a purpose, basically. So like something that as simple as a pistachio shell that people would take and throw away has value. So that's what those shells really mean to me. And it's taken away from the fact that, okay, if I take a seashell off the beach, I'm going to put it in a, some, some water or put it in some sand and put it in a glass or a container and put it in my bathroom, put it in my room, etc. So it's looking at them from a different perspective for me. Well, um, using a biographical analysis is always sort of good with the production of art. Um, also, putting yourself within it is also good because then your viewers will always be able to engage with, with your work. Um, I see I see those actually when you're talking about memories, I actually saw them as well because as a child, I used to go to a very popular beach back home in St. Anne and my mother used to collect stone and sand and um, stones and shells. 
and she still has her bag and I used to enjoy doing it for um, but over time that wasn't done as much but you producing that body of work it actually brought me back to that place and said oh it's something I used to do with my mother mm -hmm. so so that feeling of nostalgia um, was evoked through your body of work and I know a lot of persons who have engaged may have that feeling of nostalgia as well not necessarily it may have to be with shell mm -hmm. but a feeling that yes i did something with my family member mm -hmm. or my family member did something that impacted my life tremendously that i am able to think about it again with just the viewing or explanation of a body of work so your, your, your work helps people to to travel back to a happier time that is how I, I see that body of work. Okay, so through, through my research, right? And from being back home in the country. The conch has always been a symbol of strengthening one's how should I put this decent name? Strengthening one's member or their stamina. I think. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Strengthening your member or your, your body. So that was not the idea or the concept behind the body of work at all. The good part about it is that when the viewer engaged with the work, they, again, they were able to go to another place. While it is good that the work sparked that discussion that, that was on their mind, that was not what the body of work was about. Again, the idea for this piece was the idea of failure and how to arise from failure to create something in a from a beaut uh, create something bad into something beautiful right now through my research when i actually saw a conch right i was always fascinated because you see these conch shells all about on the beach you see these conch shells that people home restaurants hotels and all but you're never actually seen what a conch looked like well i never actually saw what a conch looked like and when I did my research and I looked and actually saw what a conch looks like, I was shocked. And I was like, this little organism was able to lift all of that mass, the shell, and drag themselves across the ocean floor. And I'm like, this is amazing. They don't have any hands. They just have one appendage that sticks out, mm -hmm. that acts as a hand and they use it to carry themselves along. And looking at that, it just reminds me that, again, that create that idea that guide the body of work, that you are we humans, we have the, the drive in us to go forward and excel, no matter what the situation is, no matter what um, circumstance we find ourselves in. We have the drive to move forward. So just like the conch that drags itself across the ocean floor to go find somewhere else for shelter, to go find a mate, they have that will to just travel. So we as humans, we need to take that example that no matter if we have a heavy load on our back, no matter if we have a heavy situation on our head, no matter if the whole world is against us and weighing us down, we still need to just move forward, move forward, move forward. And that is the only way we'll get progress. Just keep moving swimming. forward. Yeah. Right. Um, so I never saw that in my work at all. Um, I never know any of that that Ramon said, like about the conch. So like it's the first time hearing about all of this. Um, I was just looking at the outer barriers and the shell in itself. I wasn't looking at what can you get, like what lives in the shell or how to utilize stuff in the shell. I was just basically looking at 
the shell by itself. Um, but um, ours is open to various views. So I think from your perspective, it might mean something completely different to you than what it means to me. But that wasn't my view or take on it at all. You know, the mere fact that someone can look at the work and sexualize it. Eh, it it kind of feels good, but again, that was not the, the concept behind the work. And yeah, this was one of the most exciting, but also one of the most difficult things that I've ever done. When you have two strong willed people at work, it it's not good it is not good trust me and my my one of my biggest challenge was is that and it's something that i have to accept not everyone will envision something that i am seeing like i it is best it's best if i just make it than talk it because if i talk it you won't explain you won't understand so working with Am I through all the, the, it, it? It amazed me that she actually was able to interpret what I said at some points and do the work, especially with the piece around here, the back with the hand and thing. Because while I was explaining the, the concept, she was saying she was a visual learner. No, I'm a, a mixture. Yeah? I'm a mixture, so I'm an audio and a visual, so yeah. I have to see it and hear it. Yeah, she have to see it and hear it. And that was just kind of getting to me because, like, I said something, because there's a thing here that just opened your mind. I just said, yeah, yeah, I feel the same, but it, it wasn't happening. So um, I had to put it to paper and I said, this is what I want. And she was able to look at it and interpret it. And she did exceptionally well with that. Yeah, but like, actually, when I, when I saw the, part, the, the finished piece, I immediately called up one of my friends and said, yeah, man, she finally do something perfect now. Yeah, them say yes. So finally do something what I actually want because throughout the entire process I was not getting what I wanted at all like be believe me like it was a headache man it was a headache but you know I think the biggest issue for us was the, the time like everybody else got more time we got this limited amount of time and we were expected to create something grand so I think the stress the stress from that and then a lot of other factors that were playing your family thing. I also had someone who actually remember died suddenly and got murdered. It's for Yeah, so that that thing it just threw away. And we had other things working through. So the time never allowed us to, to how I should say communicate with each other as we should. But in the end, we got it. We got it done. So, yeah. Um, it was challenging for me. And exciting, like, the excitement came when I was engaging with the, with the ceramics. I wouldn't say time was an issue. Like the time, like, the time allotment was an issue. I think what I mostly had issue with was, like, facing the work. That was where my issue actually came. Because at times I would be doing it, and then because it brought up memories, I would put it one side, and then I'll go to it, put it one side, and then my whole issue of I wasn't stable. Stable in the sense where I wasn't at home all the time, so I was all over. I was back and forth between St. Elizabeth and home, or Spanish towns, I was like in between three places. Um, working with Ramon. It really challenged me because, as you said, we bucked heads a lot. And um, I think we both saw different things and envisioned different things. And even like when he said he was going to do something, what I got wasn't what I thought I would have gotten. So like with the shells, for instance, with the diptych, I remember he took some of my show samples saying he was going to do molds of them, like plaster molds, and they make the ceramics. And then when I got them, I thought they were much bigger than what I expected um, compared to the other shows. So, but then I still found a way to like make it work. So I did, went over with the layering, stuff like that. I didn't have an issue with his color because his color was like 
still natural, but it was like an upbeat natural to my new shades that I was using. So what I did to kind of tone down the combinations and to kind of make them merge more was that I decided to use like the embroidery threads to intertwine and the patterns on my pieces to basically highlight them and to basically match back the take the pieces together. But yeah, so I had issues when it came into like collaborating in the sense where he wanted this, I never want this. I saw something different with this aspect than he saw it. Like there was an issue that came up with the hand as well where he had a black base. I never liked the black base. Him didn't like the black base. I thought the black was pulling away because that was the only piece that had the black for one. And I, you know, black can be overpowering and um, I think even though the black was at the base, like the first thing he saw was the black. He didn't necessarily see the hand. So I thought that, you know, it would be much better if I had put it on a new shade than the black, which I think works well around the back um, compared to the tint black that was there. And even this piece here, I remember asking him to see it and him saying, no, it's to show me because it broke up. I mean, there was another piece that, there, that we, I could have used, but he didn't give me. He was strong enough giving me that one. But, like, even for this, like, I found this the most exciting and my most successful engagement because the cracks actually allowed me to go into the pieces and to basically merge the pieces, the two techniques together, the textile and the ceramic pieces to get, um, techniques together. And, yeah, so... What I basically learned from this was engagement. When you're doing engagement, don't aim say, okay, this is how it's going to look at the end. It's a learning process. It's a thought process. It's an investigation process. It's a trial and error process. No, don't come in and say, oh, this is going to go so, and I say it's going to end, because like, I learned, and even so, like, I wouldn't say I'm a perfectionist with my work, because I love texture and I love seeing details and stuff like that. So my take from this, my takeaway from this was just be open. Just don't go into it and say, okay, this is what I'm going to do. And even if you say you're going to do this and it don't work, there is always a solution. So that was my takeaway. Always a solution and always a substitute.